Aleppo on Gaza. You can continue to commit genocide while avoiding the annoyance of people being able to use their phones and computers to report on it. Perhaps you think that as your trigger-happy soldiers continue to kill journalists, 41 so far, the highest number of journalists killed over a four-week period than in any conflict in the last three decades, you think that no one will be left to expose your crimes. Perhaps you think that by si trying to silence anyone who tries to speak about your crimes, the international law violations of a state, by calling them either anti-Semites or terror supporters, people will be silent. And your intimidation campaign knows no bounds. They attack Palestinians, Jews, Israelis, UN officials, politicians, parliamentarians, university professors, and anyone worldwide who calls you out for your violations of international law. But guess what? Your intimidation and silencing will not work. We, along with all peace-loving nations and along with all people of conscience around the world, will not be silent. We will continue to call you out on your crimes, to call for accountability for your violations, for sanctions as your government continues to reject calls for a ceasefire, to massacre our people, and to entrench your colonial occupation and apartheid regime. Something your country should have learned over the past 75 years is that, is that the Palestinian people are a people who refuse to disappear. And your nuclear threats and your bombs and your tanks and your bulldozers will never break the Palestinian people's will to be free and to live in the dignity and peace to which all people are entitled. Unlike you, we have consistently stood in this forum calling for respect for international law, for ethical principles to guide state behavior, for peace over war, for humanity over national interests, for disarmament over destruction. Once again, we stand in this forum to call on all states to respect and ensure respect for international law. Let the law be the measure by which all are judged, not propaganda and hateful, biased spin steeped in racism. And to Israel's absurd assertion that Palestinians have a problem with people of Jewish faith, and give the impression that this is a religious conflict, let us say it loud and clear, this is not and has never been about religion. Had the occupiers of our land or the violators of our rights been Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, or of any other conviction, we would have called them out all the same. Palestine has always been multiracial, multi-ethnic, and multi-religious. People of Jewish faith have lived in historic Palestine as Palestinians for centuries. We consider them to be our brothers and sisters. And since the memory of the Holocaust has been invoked, let us also say loud and clear, we have the greatest of solidarity with both the victims and survivors of the Holocaust. It was not Palestinians that committed that horrific genocide, but the fascist forces that spawned from Europe. And it is unconscionable that a number of European leaders are again beating the drum as another genocide is now underway in Gaza. We are united with those hundreds of thousands of Jews around the world, including from organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace, if not now, Naamod UK, who are calling out this genocide and chanting in the streets of New York, London, Paris, Berlin, Sydney, Toronto, and all major Western cities so that their governments can hear, not in our name, end the genocide in Gaza. With them, we stand together to end this pain and suffering. Together, we will not allow this to happen. Never again is now. Now, in response to the European Union, and states that claimed that Israel is acting in self-defense in Gaza. Excuse me. Uh, I will very much appreciate, excuse me, I will very much appreciate if you can be as brief as possible. We understand 
the need for, for this statement, but uh, in respect to the different timings that we try to maintain, I will very much appreciate if you can be brief in the rest of your presentation. If they have the same length as the last one, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I do understand the, the time constraints and I will be as brief as possible. So, in response to the European Union and states that claim that Israel is acting in self-defense, I am now convinced that there is another international law that we don't know about, that the European Union, Switzerland, the United States and others are referring to when they use the term self-defense to describe the commission of war crimes and crimes against humanity at scale one that allows collective punishment, indiscriminate attacks, wanton destruction, racial discrimination, as long as your name is Israel. They just forgot to teach us this law in high school.